Hello and welcome to everyone. Welcome to uh, our audience watching us online since this festival is uh, an online theater festival, Theater European Alternatives, with its motto uh, Sturm und Drang. And uh, today we will have the opportunity to talk, to, to talk about one, uh, I would say, an, an important project, uh, a project that would uh, tell us something more about the future of our theaters, the future of the theaters in general in, in, in our countries and uh, in this region uh, as well, just as uh, about the future of uh, our play, playwrights and uh, uh, the youngest generation of the play of uh, playwrights, maybe not the youngest, but at least the young, ge uh, young generation, a new generation, a new wave of uh, playwrights. So uh, we are here to talk about one project, uh, as I said, and a very important one, a project called uh, named uh, Theater in the Creative Industries 2021, uh, focused on a young place in North Macedonia and also named uh, as uh, Skopje Whispers, Screams and Dramatizations. And our, our guests uh, today are, uh, of course, uh, young uh, playwrights, but also I will uh, introduce uh, first the, uh, I would say the, the producer, the publisher, the, the initiator, the editor, the program producer, and so many other uh, things. And uh, I would say the most important person for, for this project to, to, to happen, uh, that's uh, the uh, associate professor and PhD, uh, Ivanka Apostolova Baskar, who is also the representative of, uh, a representative of Macedonian Center IT. Hello, Ivanka. Hello, Bisper. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. And thank you very much to Thea Begos and her team who invite us to uh, present our project. I am maybe initially important, but the most important are our selected and invited authors uh, who uh, are guests and part of this uh, Zoom um, communication conference or uh, uh, dialogues. Yeah. Uh, I will be very short. Um, uh, yeah. Can you tell us uh, something more about the, the project? Can you tell us uh, how, how this project came to be? Uh, like, uh, and give, give us a, a context about the, the, uh, the discussion that we are going to have afterwards. Of course. Uh, first of all, maybe it is more fashion and trend to talk about continuity, but maintaining, nourishing, taking care, and fighting for continuity in our professions, uh, it's very important. Uh, it's not easy because we have fragile cultural policy, which means uh, that uh, uh, our center for this year is not supported for the annual project. And uh, but thanks uh, to the city of Skopje, they support uh, at least uh, from the Department of Youth and, Cal and Youth and Sport. Uh, they supported this project, so we could uh, at least dedicate it uh, to and uh, construct an open call in order to invite. Uh, young authors because of the nature of the grant we are targeting uh, people who are um, older than 18 years and younger than 30 years uh, when we start with this open call to distribute to promote there were, we received several bad critics because why we are focused only on young people it's a basic mistake i say please bear in mind the various circumstances of cultural policy and the nature of grants. So this grant, it's not an annual program. It is Department for Youth and Sport in the city of Skopje. And everything becomes calm afterwards, you know. So uh, inspired from our personal, my personal also, and my colleagues' personal uh, experience, each time when we go abroad on certain festivals or and conferences, whatever, People from ex yugoslavian countries say, listen, in, the, in this past 20, 25 years, we haven't heard about any new playwriting name coming from uh, the Republic of Macedonia or North Macedonia, except Goran Stefanovski and Dejan Dukovski. Wonderful talents, very relevant, extremely relevant um, uh, playwrights, but they're not the only one, you know? So I think connected also one uh, aspect of fragile cultural policy that forgets about 
the, the generations that comes after uh, Dan Dukovsky and before, uh, after Goran Slavanovsky. Something that is very important, something that is, um, uh, uh, how can I say, that you have to take care, that you have to uh, uh, automatically promote those person with all the critics, with all the uh, open discussion about their strong sides and their weaknesses, but not to ignore them, not to forget to publish them, not to forget to uh, stage them. I think it is very um, ungrateful in contemporary Macedonian theater and performing arts that uh, long that one year or two years ago we were very rigid and forgettable about uh, new names, new local names, staging new plays, and uh, taking the risk. So. After 10 uh, application, we made, my colleagues we made a final selection and we invite these uh, five authors. Of course, we invite uh, Mia Efremova to publish her plays who are written also under her pseudonym, Mia Volt, uh, in order to, um, how can I say, in order for hope to provoke that some of our very respectful and talented directors will pay attention and um, decide to stage uh, some of our authors or maybe everybody. So thank you, Beth. Yeah, ju ju just one uh, short question. Uh, just uh, can you tell us something about the follow-up or, or something about uh, this kind of, uh, I don't know, projects that, that, can, that can happen uh, in the future or, or something, because uh, as you said, uh, th this is maybe one of uh, these kind of projects that, that happened after, I don't know, or maybe the first one of uh, the first project that, that is this kind of, that, that holds this kind of nature. So is there anything that, that we yes, I forgot. expect for the future? Yes, I forgot to mention the most important thing that uh, we are going to publish electronic books uh, electronic plays uh, written by uh, the authors who are our guests uh, uh, during this Zoom session. And um, uh, beside this package, together with this promotional package, uh, we hope that in the near future, our center would see at least additional uh, support to make a video theater project based on uh, these plays. Uh, fragments or all of them depends from the finances just in order to um, not the, the story to be finished and forgotten or uh, stopped on the level of electronic books. And why electronic books? Because unfortunately we don't have sufficient uh, finances to make hard copy for now, but electronic books means very easy regional international distribution, promotion on each platform, so new, on each networks who are our partners and collaborators. And, uh, also uh, spread uh, promotion on uh, uh, every libraries on the, in the region or in Europe with whom we collaborate and uh, share uh, examples of our uh, of each our new published uh, uh, ebook. Okay, thank you then, uh, Ivanka, for this wonderful uh, background of the project. And now uh, I will continue with the. Uh, authors with the uh, playwrights and uh, initially I would like to just to congratulate you for being part of this uh, project and for for having this kind of experience it it sounded like like an important one but now uh, we'll have the opportunity to to hear your uh, views and your perspectives uh, about this project and how it uh, what it meant for you so uh, i will begin uh, as, as i see you here in the in these boxes of uh, zoom so uh, here with with us are mia efremova and nina uh, Plavanyats, Nikola Kuzelov, Mia Nikolovska, and Sinan uh, Rakipovsky. So uh, as I'm seeing you here in this kind of order, I will start with you, Mia Efremova. So Mia, can you, can you tell us something uh, from your, from your point, point of view, how, how this project was, what it meant for you, how, uh, how you find yourself in this project and, and any other thought that you have about this? Uh, thank you very much. Um... Uh, Westford, uh, firstly, I would like to share my thankfulness uh, for being part of this project uh, for a second time um, or third time 
including the first one in 2014 with the short play Albert with Ivanka when I met her in Bitola uh, on the International Monodrama Festival and in the first colony for dramaturgy and playwrights from the Balkan. And uh, now this year, I would like to share my gratefulness and thankfulness for uh, publishing two of my plays. I mean, my last play, uh, Big Deal uh, in English and uh, my unpublished plays, including my first play uh, written in a notebook um, almost 10 years ago. Uh, maybe more, <laughs> first in a notebook with a pen, uh, Ray Goes to Heaven in Macedonia, and then translated in English and other short plays uh, as well, uh, like Albert, um, Mandate and other plays. And it means a lot because I didn't graduate uh, dramaturgy. Uh, I have BIA in screenwriting and producing, MGMIT uh, from the Film Academy in Prague. And now I'm a student at the uh, Academy of, of Fine Arts, uh, Classical Painting Institute, where I work and live and I was born uh, in the Museum, National Institution and Museum. Uh, and I work now here for three years uh, when I came back from Prague and uh, this means a lot because I never really truly expected anything for my play from my plays to be published or to make something from them. Some of them were staged in the past where I was before I went in Prague, but then things changed and I was focused more on film and other things and other writings. And now I try not to write actually. And I can understand how some people who study dramaturgy are sick of writing because I'm sick of painting <laughs> and I couldn't wait to finish with the paintings, but you can't stop writing. You can stop for a year or two, but not for long. It's impossible. So I'm, I think that from my first play, Ray Goes to Heaven, to my last play, Big Deal, uh, it's kind of a it's circle one period of my writings and I will call it acceptance of myself when uh, if I merge all those plays in one picture like a moving picture in a film uh, we came to one conclusion uh, how do we accept ourselves as human beings and I mean that's the teenage years uh, from 15 16 to or 14 to 27 which I'm now and uh, how to uh, get through those uh, critical years of our lives uh, when we question ourselves a lot of things and how to accept what we are what we have in ourselves what we can do with that in our life and I really hope my next period will have more answers than questions in the first one, but I'm very grateful also to be part of this uh, uh, international online uh, festival and for all the publishing, all of the promotions, uh, because without them, without Ivanka, without the ITI Macedonian uh, International the uh, Theater uh, Institution, my, plan my place wouldn't have seen the light. Yeah, some of them would have, uh, have been staged in Stipe and Skopje, but as Ivanka said at the beginning, um, all the audience in our country and in the Balkan, we don't have a tradition or fundament, uh, fundament for or a base uh, or a habit to go in theaters, to see some plays, to have fun there, but just for somebody to go there. That's for me. Yeah, great. Thank you for uh, these thoughts. And uh, it looks like, uh, Ivanka, you have done a, a wonderful job, uh, uh, especially with this project, uh, uh, since it, it really changed some things in, in our culture and uh, in our uh, state of theaters in general. So now uh, we will continue with uh, Nina Plavanyats. Uh, Nina, you are the, the only one coming from outside of Macedonia. Uh, 
if, if we don't consider Mia like coming from Prague and uh, if we consider Mia like uh, being from Macedonia. Uh, and uh, so ca can, you, can you tell us about uh, your experience and uh, how do you see this, this project and what it meant for you, especially uh, for you as one coming from uh, outside of Macedonia? And if you can give us any uh, thoughts about things in or any parallel about the things how, how things are going on in in serbia and how do you see them going on here in macedonia it will be great um hello thank you uh my name is nina plavanets and i am as you said i'm not from macedonia i'm originally from belgrade i was born there and i studied dramaturgy at the faculty of dramatic arts in in belgrade uh, I've graduated two years ago and my first premiere uh, made from my original play was actually in Skopje in Macedonia in uh, the, the National Theater in Skopje and we had our premiere two months ago. It's uh, called Samo Glass or Just Voice and uh, I've been actually sent the information about this wonderful project by the director of that play, Maria Neciak, who also originated from uh, Macedonia and currently lives in Slovenia, but frequently returns to Macedonia where, where he started his career. Uh, he sent me this project he's, he was most excited about, and I thought it was uh, a perfect opportunity for me to, to share this play I had for years now uh, with the world that didn't see the light of day until, until this project. And because of that, I'm very, very grateful uh, to the organization and especially to Ivanka because uh, like every project, every play needs to live its own life to be born and then to grow and then for us as authors to, to shape this play in accordance to our own preferences and personalities and everything surrounding us, but also to allow this work of art to, to grow and sort of live a life of its own. And uh, this play, uh, unfortunately until now, I didn't get a chance to present it to the world. And uh, I didn't uh, persuade myself to return to the play and go through it again as a more mature, I hope, writer. So after learning about this project, I was uh, inspired and excited because honestly, these kind of projects are quite rare and I can't make a, a certain parallel to this type of, of project uh, with anything going on in Serbia, we have quite limited um, competitions for dramatic texts, dramatizations and plays. Uh, only recently did I learn that we, we are getting new programs um, of public readings in the national theaters across the country. And I am so thankful and happy because of that for all the young students that are only enrolling in, in dramaturgy and, and starting their journeys as writers. But yes, it was this learning about this project and this wonderful initiative to give the spotlight to, to us young writers. Uh, it gave me the strength to, to return to that work and uh, I've submitted it afterwards and uh, quickly after I've heard from Ivanka uh, and I'm very excited to see what will come out of all of this and I'm also very excited to read all of the other submitted plays. I, I can't wait for the ebook. Yeah, we can. Uh, we are waiting for, for the ebook and for the opportunity to, to have uh, the ebook in in our hand, if we can say so. If not in in our it's devices, it's not one ebook. It's uh, um, six ebooks. <laughs> yeah, six ebooks. Yeah. Thank you, Ivanka. So uh, now we we will continue with uh, uh, the second Mia, uh, and uh, Mia, you are, you are uh, 
as, I, as I'm aware, you are the, the youngest one here and you are still a uh, student, you are still uh, somehow in this educational process of uh, uh, dramaturgy and uh, yet to become uh, the, a, a leading playwright in, in, in our country. So can, can, you, can you tell me something more about uh, what this project meant for you, especially as uh, someone who, who's coming from, from uh, the faculty, someone who, who is not uh, left outside of the faculty and left alone, like uh, having to, to handle everything with, with their lives, but as someone who is still maybe not so fra fragile as everyone else. Well, I do study dramaturgy and I'm currently in my third year, so I'm graduating next year, which is exciting. Uh, obviously, it is sort of like a support system that I do have my faculty and my professors sort of to guide me through the process of writing. Uh, however, uh, because the process of writing is the longest, unfortunately, we don't really get to see our plays put on stage, unfortunately, because there is not enough time for that. And there are always so many excuses. And luckily with these projects, I'm actually, this is my second project with Ivanka. And um, it's great to see that someone is actually listening to the playwrights of this country and that they're giving us a voice in a way. Uh, and uh, it also is, uh, I'm extremely thankful that I get to be a part of this community and to collaborate with amazing young people who are also into the same things that I am into, which is writing, obviously. Um, I happen to write uh, mostly uh, uh, plays that I don't think are really conventional and therefore I don't really feel like too many people would be interest, interested in them. Uh, but Ivanka showed interest and that definitely um, gave me uh, like a push to sort of believe in myself. And I feel like it is, if anything, it is amazing for the self-esteem of an author to have someone to believe in them and support them and I feel like it's amazing that I get to be a part of this. Great. Uh, okay, now uh, Sinan, uh, you are you're an actor and you are also uh, a playwright. Uh, of course, you, you you will tell us something more about the project and what it meant to you. But but I would also I would like to to hear uh, some of your thoughts about how how does an actor becomes a playwright and and and, and why would an actor become a playwright? <laughs> uh, what well, I mean is there something that I don't know that that acting doesn't doesn't give you something enough or something that you are looking for and uh, and. Can you make a link between uh, uh, being an author of a play and maybe even acting in the same play as well? Yes, thank you, Besford. Uh, first of all, I'm so so happy to to have this opportunity to be with all these professional playwrights. I'm I'm an actor, as you said, but acting isn't much. Uh, different than playwriting i think uh, this I, I must be honest this was so uh sudden thing uh, something that came up suddenly and i i didn't plan this i yes i i i am um, writing plays but uh, still no one uh had the opportunity to see them and uh thanks to ivanka and all this project uh I must say again, so suddenly, this this might play. Uh, I have to say something. Uh, uh, I I saw in the email that was uh, the name of the play. It was the boyfriend, and I think that that's uh, a little bit of a mistake because uh, if I if somebody asks me, the play should be dude because the Macedonian thing of Dechko is like dude. And uh, this play, it came just suddenly as I came here with you wonderful people. And uh, I think that it's it's great opportunity, not just because my play came here and somebody, uh, somebody read it and somebody will read it in the future. But uh, this kind of projects, I think, are very helpful for uh, people who cannot uh, push the 
the limit of I can't say that the arts are a kind of a royal thing, but there are too many talents and real uh, writers who are out there and nobody knows about them. And they're just, uh, they're, they have something to say. And I'm so happy that, that these kind of projects are, are uh, made. Well, great, yeah. Th thank you for, for this observation. And now uh, we have, uh, I would say, last but not least, <laughs> uh, Nikola Kuzilov. And uh, Nikola, uh, you are much more uh, involved into writing uh, screenplays and then uh, some of them adapting into uh, uh, plays. So, so can you tell me, of course, about your role and experience in, in this project as well, but also uh, something about this process of uh, reworking with the same material, with your own thoughts and tra somehow translating them from one media into another one. Yes, uh, hi, this uh, work. Uh, thank you. Uh, so as you said, I'm when it comes to writing, uh, what I do the most is like uh, screenwriting, but my original profession and uh, first uh, profession is acting also like cinema, and that's a funny thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, first, uh, I would like to make that link between acting and writing in general, and I think there is not much of a difference between them because as an actor, when you are building a character, you are building the character in yourself, and as a writer, you are building the character on paper or on your computer. I mean, uh, so from acting, I switched, not switch, but somehow started to write uh, mostly uh, uh, screenplays, uh, writing for movies, short movies, uh, feature movies. I uh, have like a few short movies produced, two feature produced. And uh, what I do least with writing is actually uh, plays, like theater plays. I have just uh, one play written and published uh, in 2020, I think, previous year uh, in Eurodrum. And uh, this now, Epilogue uh, 277, uh, which was born uh, specifically for this uh, call. Uh, and uh, here I... I would like to thank Ivanka and ITI for everything that they do for the young people to present themselves to the public. Uh, so the, I saw the call for, uh, for this project on social media, I think, and it was like a few months before the deadline. And I said a reminder because I had a lot of to do uh, in, the, in those days. Uh, and the funny thing was that uh, the deadline was like two days uh, after that was my birthday and I was like uh, going 29 and uh, maybe there was uh, not even a chance for me to apply. But uh, lucky me, I <laughs> had those last two days. Uh, so I broke this idea that I had like running through my mind a, a few years, maybe a decade. Uh, and it just happened in two days, and I'm so happy that in the end it was selected, and I'm here with all these young, talented people. Well, great then. Uh, so, uh, as we are talking now, I, I really feel like, uh, uh, or at least I, you are giving me this kind of impression that uh, uh, this kind of project uh, of projects were like I don't know, that, like there was an urge for this kind of projects. And uh, can, can you tell me now, uh, as, as young uh, playwrights, is there something that, uh, that is missing out there? Is there, is there anything that, that has to be done and, and yet no one thought about that? And I don't know, are, are you, as, a, as playwrights, are you, are you missing something, uh, something that really has to be done? And it's, it's an open question for, for every one of you. Yes, we are missing teamwork with more playwrights and mentorship with other playwrights, which are older and other writers. 
uh, collaboration, consistency with theaters, more projects, uh, more collaboration with the Ministry of Cultures, and to finally put some a foundation on something because everything we create, it's 2021, we create everything, we have everything, and then it falls down. And if we don't make it now, this generation or the generation after us, if there is a generation, I hope so, it will fall down again. And there will be no writing, no theater, no one, nobody buy books or read plays or it's embarrassing to tell how some how some people, professors from the science fellows don't know even what's the meaning of the word dramaturgy is. Well, unfortunately, uh, we are living in this kind of, uh, of time in, in this kind of era, I would say, but uh, is there, uh, I mean, uh, Nina, Nina mentioned something that, that uh, I'm not so aware that is happening or going on here in Macedonia. Nina, you, you mentioned uh, that in, in Serbia there is an opportunity for a play to be, to be read and uh, like pu public reading of, uh, of a play or, and things like that. Uh, do, do you think that this kind of uh, let's say a methodology or, or, or I don't know, like, is this a one move forward, one step forward to, to, for, for a play to be put on stage, to be produced? Does, does, does it really help or, or maybe it's just something, I don't know, something completely different, something that, that is just a, I don't know, project for itself? Uh, it can get uh, it can get a little self gratuitous. Uh, I mean, there is this dissonance in in our line of work be, between what works in theory and what works in reality. Uh, I love the idea of uh, exposure for young authors. Uh, I love the idea uh, for that expo exposure to be on a, in the national theater of Belgrade and other national theaters around the country. I love that. Uh, what I can say though, is that there are still perhaps a bit too few of these readings because uh, our classes in, in my ex-faculty, we, we have about seven to 10 students each year. Each year we have uh, about 10 more unemployed dramatists in, in this country. So perhaps uh, I would like to see festivals dedicated exclusively to these public readings as creative as they could possibly be, bring in, bring in the big guns, bring in the, the established directors uh, to help stage, even, even though it's a, a public reading, it doesn't have to be this demure and, and boring happening, it can be exciting. I think that that life and excitement is something that's necessary to attract the attention to these public readings because the last thing we want is for that to be this self-absorbed happening where we will get this uh, opportunity to hear the play but the, the only people in the audience will be the parents and the brothers, sisters and uh, perhaps a few colleagues. Uh, there needs to uh, there needs to be a culture of actually going to these things, marketing about these things. If we spend, uh, I'm both <laughs> in the the film industry and in the theater industry. I, I know how much money goes to marketing, and if we can um, make up for that, I mean, we we can get a small sum to to raise awareness about these readings. I had my first public reading in the. National Theater of Shabbats when I was barely 18 years old. I, I just turned 18 and I was incredibly excited. I have only started studying dramaturgy and my play was selected as one of five best in Serbia for, for Steri in Opozori. I don't know if you're familiar with the festival, but it yeah, seems yeah, to be a, a huge deal. I was beyond excited. 
Uh, however, the marketing was obsolete. So nobody really knew that we are even getting public readings, even though it's the biggest theater festival in Serbia by far. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and the th uh, theater festival, which is uh, focused on, uh, especially on the uh, dramaturgy and uh, Serbian playwrights. Yes, I mean, uh, the, the rules and the selection has been changed uh, to uh, put uh, our authors more on a pedestal, but it wasn't always like that. I'm, I'm happy to see those changes. I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, it's not enough for it to be a lovely opportunity in theory. It's not enough for us as young authors to hear, well, you should be happy because you're young and this should be a great deal for you. I really do want it to be a great deal for us, but give us exposure, give us excellent uh, professionals and mentors to, to work with, because if we've made a play good enough to bring this attention and, and the cause for a public reading, we've deserved uh, good colleagues to respect both us and our work and our time. I think the, the respect for authors in general, especially young authors, it's, is what's missing the most, besides money, of course, but that's always the issue. Okay, and uh, Mia Nikolovska, now, uh, since you are, uh, uh, as we also already mentioned, you, you are a student, uh, I would like to, to know uh, your thoughts about uh, and and your expectations. Uh, what, uh, how do you see your your future now? Uh, you 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 will end your uh, uh, your faculty, your uh, studying, and 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 then what? Uh, uh, like, uh, is there is there an opportunity for for you? Do you see any opportunity? Is there a chance for for a new playwright uh, or I don't know, or or maybe that's just a dream. Well, I like to stay optimistic and I have met so many wonderful people at my faculty that are all, that are all super talented and striving for uh, something better, especially in the theater world. So I do feel like there is a new wave coming with us new generations because there is sort of like, we're kind of angry that it has always been um, just the same people, the same authors, the same actors, the same directors. And I feel like now uh, all of those people are obviously getting older. There's supposed to be a newer generation coming in. And I feel like all of us are very uh, optimistic, new and fresh, and we can really change the theater world. And uh, maybe perhaps uh, all of us can be successful in our dreams, which I feel like is a possibility, especially now because we are all striving for something better and for a newer version of theater. I feel like the old theater uh, Im image that we have is sort of gone and that's dead in a sense. Uh, and therefore I feel like something new is coming and it's going to be much better than previously. Okay, and then now again with, with a question for, for, for all of you. Uh, how, like, how do you see the the new new? Do, do you see any new wave? Do you see any any new generation? Not not only uh, by ages, but but also as a as a uh, as some new movement in in theater. And also, do 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 you see or do you feel that maybe I don't know the new generation has to offer something new. So it's all of you. Uh, okay, I would like to say something. Uh, uh, there is a new wave and new generation in the theater uh, globally, and we can see it, yes, on YouTube, on the internet, and visiting some uh, uh, more developed countries and visiting some theaters there. But uh, here in Macedonia, uh, the new wave is coming, but it's coming late. Like, everything else. I mean, also in the theater, Mia mentioned that uh, uh, those people who are the same actors, writers, directors, uh, they are getting old. Uh, they will uh, 
go from the stage uh, soon and there will be a new generation and that will be a generation of some transition, I think. And after that, I'm sure the, there will be a new wave uh, here, I mean, in, in our country. Uh, not just in the sense of writing, uh, in the sense of the acting, style of the acting, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the aesthetics of the theater, or, or the aesthetics of the stage, uh, costumography, everything. Uh, the theater in Macedonia, like these days, I think it, the theater is, here is confused. Like, uh, people are struggling between uh, the theater that we know, this uh, old theater and all these modern uh, modern ways and new ways that uh, the younger generation uh, are, are bearing with us. And there is a struggle that I expect a transition, sadly, and after that, maybe we will, we will get to, uh, to this new wave that is already happening in some other countries. And now, Ivanka, I'm coming back to you uh, after a while. Uh, can, you, can you tell us uh, how, how do you see this uh, new wave and, and new, uh, new ways of, of doing theater and uh, new trends and, and all of that? How, how do you see uh, this new thing coming in our theaters, especially in our institutional theaters? Uh, is there... A, way is there a space uh, are are these institutions open for this kind of new things um first thank you best for first i respect our theater and i respect all the people who are fighting, fighting building, building struggling, struggling for, established, for established or anonymous, anonymous and are creating, and are creating our, our uh, contemporary theater and theater and performing arts in our country but, but i think the participation is a serious problem, but we are not going to talk about it because we are aware. And the phenomenon of clans, like uh, you have a national institution, but you occupy it and you treat it like it's your own property. It's wrong. It's wrong. Nobody works like that, you know? Otherwise, we are southern people, full of natural dynamics, full of sense of freedom, right? Very melodic, which means that by default we have certain talents, right, for, performat for, 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 for performativeness, for performing, uh, acting, staging, improvising, whatever. But I think uh, theaters, most of the theaters with uh, 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 our academies, we have also private academy, we have many studios, somehow we are got stuck in uh, traditional formats that are not updated. And uh, uh, how can I say, confusions, potentials of, uh, Coquetting, borrowing, recognizing, uh, uh, intuitively taking and inputting in your program, you know. So uh, uh, it's a it's a issue. It's a question of fragile system né? and fragile systems inside the system that can be changed if we first start to notice certain uh, human characteristics. Né? Res uh, starting with respect, with um, uh, investment, uh, energetical creative investment, no censorship, no self-censorship that comes with education. We have to be very courageous, very brave, taking the risk. Even if our first or second performance is a total failure, you know, it's very normal. The ups and downs, they're natural, they're very normal. But you, you mustn't play social engineering and controlling the ups and downs, controlling the coming and going of each new generation, you know? You just have to give to everybody, everybody coming from certain professional field in the theater, art, culture, give them a chance. And at the very end, allow this, maybe somebody will be very critical of this aspects of natural selection, you know? Some of us by nature are stronger, dominant, more dominant in their aesthetics, in their uh, style, in their uh, uh, capacities of experimenting, uh, um, uh, using maximum this, um, how can I say, um, trans complex, complex transformation in the domain of our theatrical profession. You know, Some of them are more weak, yeah, more narrow, but uh, 
you just have to give to everybody a chance and then to see what is going on. Immediately you emerge several new ways, which is somewhere in Germany, in Croatia, in Slovenia, very normal, right? Because the communication with young generation is not cut. It's not, um, how can I say, uh, suppressed. I hope so. I'm not too dispersed talking about this. Well, yeah, and, and, and let's let's not be so 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 negative. Let, let, no, so, no, no, uh, so, no, 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 I'm not, not not saying just 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 I'm not addressing it to you. But uh, you know, uh, let's let's focus on what what we can do. And because uh, you know, if you, if we focus on our problems, we, we know them all and we we know them very well. But but let's 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 talk about what, what we can do and what, what we should do. So uh, keeping this in mind, uh, I, would, I would start with Mia Efremova. Mia, you, you said yourself that you are, you are coming like from other uh, kind of, of arts and now you're somehow ending up with, with uh, dramaturgy. And is there something that uh, this kind of art can offer you that uh, other, other kind of art didn't or couldn't? Yes, um, I think everything, every art is connected, every kind of art with science also. But uh, play writing and writing plays and or scripts or any kind of writing is like me sitting in the theater. Mm, I'm not sure if when I'm writing a play if uh, or a scene, if I'm watching a movie or a theater play somehow, because it depends on the music in my head. If I don't hear a music, I cannot write. And it's kind of a part of me, which was hard to accept. Sometimes I have real headaches when I don't write and when I ignore it and I have to write. It's uh, usually something inside me, something uh, which sometimes I hate to do because sometimes I'm doing something that I like or you're out with your friends or you're doing personal things and it comes to you and you must write in that moment and you're on your phone writing and you don't know what you're writing and in 10 years after that it makes sense with some other play that scene. We have to accept that we'll be part of uh, the rest of our lives. Well, what we, it's connected with other things, with other arts in a way where uh, it's the same medium, we are a channel, just, the, it's the same energy, writing as acting, as film, as other arts, as painting, it's the same. It's like climbing a mountain Sometimes the last play almost killed me. I couldn't wait to finish it. It was like in my head and I told Ivan, I can't wait to finish it. I'm not reading it again. <laughs> no way. Yeah. And uh, since the, there is this kind of need to, to write, are there, uh, and now I'm, I'm asking this, especially in, the, in this frame of what, what we call or what we used to call like, uh, national dramaturgy or local dramaturgy or, or something like that. So is there, is there something that uh, like uh, we or, or you in this, in, in this context as, let's say, as local dram drama, local playwrights, is there, uh, are there subjects and themes that like people are uh, waiting for you to, to cover or like you have to cover since you are, I don't know, uh, a playwright from Macedonia or Serbia and you are not supposed to, to talk about, I don't know, big issues or big themes, but just local ones or is, is there this kind of uh, approach? Mm, no. Uh, you mean the topic on which I write? Yeah, yeah. the topic, the issue, mm. the, the... No, the, yeah. it has never been. I wrote the first uh, opera on Macedonian in Stip in 2013, uh, the libretto on Macedonian language uh, with uh, soprano uh, Blagica Pop Tomova, which is now in the USA. She lives there. Uh, and 
it was about Brexit and uh, how European Union would not exist anymore and the coming of the immigrants. But uh, people barely look at, uh, at these things. I mean, everything is given to us, not just to our place. Every hidden issue is given to us to, through films, through books. If you know how to read, you will find the answer. People don't read, don't watch movies. They are not interested. So it's not our fault. <laughs> anyway, we yeah. are telling them the truth. Yeah. And Nina, do, do, do you share the, the same thoughts? Because uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, Steri Napozoria, uh, as far as I'm, I'm aware, that's the theater festival where, where uh, most of the plays that are presented there are somehow uh, dealing with uh, topics and issues that are mm, on a very local level, I would say. Well, I think the issues we have on the local level uh, being uh, subtle, subtle dictator dictatorship, uh, subtle fascism, misogyny, assault, I don't think that's very local. Uh, it's a problem locally and it's a problem globally. So uh, the the plays, I myself haven't been uh, to Stereo Positive this year if, because I have some film shootings, but uh, I haven't seen them personally. I, I know in general what's, what's on our stages now. I think the problems we are encountering both in Serbia and I suppose in Macedonia and in the Balkans too are the problems that are currently plaguing most of the Western world. Uh, I myself don't have a problem referencing this in, in my work. I don't have a problem uh, watching it. And sometimes I uh, have a need to tell some other kind of story and I don't feel the need to, to reference the, the it and the now that is currently on the news as the, the big leading problem. But I think it uh, makes a mark on all of us. We can't exactly cut ourselves off from, from the world and from these problems. It changes uh, perspective and you can write a romantic period play uh, which will have a, a subtext, subtext of abuse and isolation, which are also, uh, I mean, current and quite modern problems. Yeah, and also uh, I would like to know uh, your opinion, I mean, not, not yours personally, uh, Nina, but all of you, uh, about, because I have that kind of impression that sometimes uh, theaters and, and productions in general, uh, they tend to, to, to take uh, place by almost like by well-known authors, uh, recognized authors and uh, authors that are sometimes maybe uh, free, uh, that they, they don't have any authorship anymore and it's uh, maybe cheaper to to put them on stage and and things like that so how how do you deal with this kind of uh, let's say restrictions to to your work do do you do you have the, this kind of feeling that uh, maybe sometimes it's much easier to to produce a play by a well-known author or by someone that, that uh, a production doesn't have to pay an authorship than uh, maybe one of your plays. And it's again, open to, to all of you, so feel free. Just shortly. Yeah, Ivanka, yeah. Just shortly, I think uh, it is legitimate to play on a secure card, right? by choosing certain famous classical or classical modern or very famous contemporary for Anglo-Saxonic area or from uh, German speaking area. But the point is that we have to be more courageous to risk with uh, uh, local uh, new voices, you know, take a risk to see what's gonna happen. Maybe the audience uh, like to hear new voices, you know, uh, and to see the, what kind of filter we will give yeah, through 
uh, writing about certain topics that are as much as local in the same time, absolutely global. Né? And uh, to see how they will react, you know. I think I'm a little bit tired and I agree with my colleagues from all around the world who are um, criticizing um, uh, the cultural policy who is uh, trying to construct the opinion of the audience, you know. They are just playing the, like they are hearing the voice of audience, but you are just, uh, how can I say, um, uh, you, you uh, excuse my English, you, you, you put constructions, you know, you think that you are more clever than audience just because you are a, a cultural politician, you know, and you know where, how to lead further certain uh, trends or, um, I don't know, thematic fluids, uh, ways, subways, etc. The risk. Old good fall formula. That's why we are on a, uh, still enchanted uh, from uh, uh, movies and theaters uh, made in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, 90s in certain uh, stages. Because they they were more braver, you know. And uh, I think that certain things will start to reset, but I don't know when this COVID frustrates us. Somewhere in between, directly or indirectly, depends from the individual. Uh, and I'm glad that you mentioned COVID because I, I wanted to 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 follow up with, with some questions about uh, this this new uh, normality, as we call it. Uh, so, uh, what what do you think? Uh, what's the role of the the playwrights uh, offering some some new ideas, some new uh, trends and new ways of doing theater now, dealing with uh, this pandemic uh, theater trends and movements and and so on. New target yeah. topics. Sorry? On which we new target topics mm -hmm. on which uh, we need to write not just the history of the pandemic but uh, the medical problems. Uh, the, we need to protect women and, and uh, uh, side effects of the vaccines uh, for uh, unfertile women who couldn't have uh, kids, uh, for women who survived uh, COVID, also for men, uh, for young kids, for unemployed people, uh, for depressed people, because the st uh, statistics shows that uh, suicide is bigger, the biggest in 2020 than in any other year of since uh, the millennia started, and that's, I think it's dramatic, and it's enough to write a play about it for every country in this world. It's a question or a problem that uh, is addressing the whole world, not just us. Because writing history or historical play, how we were isolated, everyone can do that. And Sinan, you, you wanted to add something? Yes, first of all, thank you. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, this, uh, I don't want you to understand me wrong. This pandemic isn't a good thing. I'm depressed as all the world. But uh, it's a problem and it's a good opportunity for the artist because the problem, I think it's uh, the main motivational thing for artists to, to create something. And uh, with the previous uh, question, I think the politics and arts has two things in common. That's public and uh, creating problems. And I think that uh, we, we, shall, we shall work together, not maybe together in that conventional uh, style, like working together, it cannot be because that's like oil and water, but we can uh, trace a path together. And yes, I, I'm, I believe that all the world is tired from, from all these uh, old fashioned things in the world happening till now. And I don't think we're now at the point of the Renaissance I, I think that we haven't came there, but we will, we will. I believe in it. Okay, and also what, what's the, uh, what's your point of view about uh, 
the the role of uh, the dramaturgy and the playwrights in, in general about finding new ways of doing theater because we we saw that uh, uh, some new ways emerged out of uh, this pandemic situation like uh, online theater like uh, uh, even this kind of uh, zoom theater and uh, uh, so many other branches of uh, online theaters and even this uh, festival itself is an online festival, online theater festival. So do you see yourself as uh, uh, playwrights uh, that you have this uh, kind of, I don't know, leading, leading role now that, that you can write new plays uh, that would be much more suitable for this kind of, th of uh, theater trends? Maybe, maybe we can hear now uh, Mia Nikolovska. Mia, well, what are your thoughts about this? Well, I mean, it's not the first pandemic, so realistically, we can't invent anything. Uh, but I have seen a couple of uh, attempts of some sort of a Zoom theater, but honestly, I don't really see that as theater. I don't know. To me, it just doesn't give off the same energy as going to the theater and sitting down and watching a play happen right in front of you. Uh, so I don't really think that we have a leading role. I think it's the exact same role, except now we have to get creative with the ways that we portray things because we can't be in the same room with um, the people that we're supposed to show the play with. Well, okay, I can I can agree with you uh, at a certain level, but since there there are these kind of productions and since there are these kind of theater uh, plays going on, it, it I mean we we cannot ignore it. So uh, I, I would like to hear uh, from you, like uh, how how do you see yourself in? Would you some of you uh, write some kind of? Uh, an online play that, that would be an online play by itself, not, not something that would be like adapted to an online play, but an online play by itself, a play written as this kind of, uh, of play, of this kind of a genre and a play there that, I don't know, remarks would, would be like he enters in this, in, from this kind of the camera, someone else enters theirs, uh, I don't know, uh, this, character is doing this on on his box of uh, of a setting and so on how how do you see on on all of this and again it's open to yeah i'm sorry um i'm strict in one my belief that uh, in theater there is some things that cannot be changed and that have been not changed thousands of years and that's just impossible but uh Yes, as you said, these this new opportunities, uh, I believe somebody tried to do that. I myself, I, I, I was uh, playing, um, I was acting in one uh, online play. It was a disaster, but uh, yeah, like uh, the first play we ever made uh, online. And I think that, yes, if, if somebody uh, tries to... to to make a play especially for online playing uh, and online watching, I think that that is pretty much possible. Maybe that's the uh, courage and the, and the uh, risk that, that Ivanka is talking about. You know, if, if the play was, as you are saying, I'm now citing you, like if the play was a disaster, it doesn't mean that, that I don't know, that you should quit doing that, <laughs> you know. Uh, Okay then, but uh, also for, for you as, as actors, uh, Sinan and, and Nicola, do, I mean, do, do you find, uh, yes, uh, Sinan, we, we already heard your, your opinion, uh, but do you find this kind of, uh, of theater as a new way of doing theater, as a new way of uh, communicating with, with audience? And also uh, I would like to, to like to 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 go back to to the previous topic when we said the like sometimes there is a tendency to to work uh, or to produce 
uh, well known a theater, uh, a, a well known playwright, then uh, or a well well known play, then uh, again you as actors, do you do you deal with that? Do do you have that urge that like I don't know, uh, like sometimes uh, we tend to to see things and to do things in our profession just by uh, wondering how it would look like or sound like having this kind of a role in in our uh, in our CV, in our portfolio, in our resume. Uh, resume. So, uh, how, how do you, how do you see all of this? So there are two questions, like uh, the first one about the pandemic, and the second one about these uh, tendencies of uh, well-known playwrights and plays. Okay, Nicola and Sina. I, uh, uh, okay, uh, I will uh, try to answer you and give you my opinion. Uh, uh, for the first question, or I will combine. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we all have opportunity, like uh, the writers, the sectors, as uh, everybody that are, that are in this uh, uh, in this profession. Uh, here is a chance. I'm thinking that this is a chance to invent something new and to make something new, uh, because uh, since uh, this situation there wasn't uh, uh, there wasn't uh, this form of theater, and I think that uh, first as writers uh, <coughs> we can uh, we can write uh, especially for uh, online theater. Uh, and as actors also, but the question that rises, do we want to do that? And what we think about that, uh, me personally, uh, uh, I'm okay with that. The, this COVID situation bring a new form of uh, art, I would say, because I have a problem with uh, uh, saying it uh, theater. It's not theater. We, we, knew, we know what theater is. Uh, theater is a person on a stage and person that looks at him and observes, and that's theater is happening here and now. As sectors also, uh, like Sinan said, uh, we all had some experience with uh, this online acting, theater, art show. Uh, it's some, uh, it's some beautiful mix in the end from movies. Uh, uh, you have uh, online, you have uh, camera, video, you have uh, theater. It's a mix of. Uh, of many, uh, many branches of art, but it's not theater. I have problem with uh, saying it's theater uh, because when you're in theater and you're on the stage, a sector, you have the stage fright. You have the audience breathing in your back and that's a completely different uh, experience than being home at your pajamas and uh, acting and waiting for your partner to, uh, to, to, talk, uh, to talk back to you and uh, pray for the Zoom not to crash or not to stop, you know? Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, this is some new form. And it, uh, is it good or not? I don't know, but it's uh, nice because it's new. And it can be, uh, we all can uh, be innovative in it. Uh, and for the second question, sorry, I'm, I'm stubborn now. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, the second question was about the uh, famous plays and... Uh, yeah, about the, yeah, about famous plays, famous uh, playwrights and... Uh, uh, me personally, uh, also as an actor, I'm, uh, I'm avoiding uh, famous and classical plays and texts and everything. I think... Uh, uh, they are classics uh, because they are like uh, great, but uh, I'm trying uh, as a person, as an artist to, to push the art forward somehow in some new modern ways. Uh, I like to play Shakespeare or Chekhov, but uh, I would like to see some new, completely new approach uh, to that. And uh, as a writer, I'm also trying to, to always uh, uh, put some new uh, modern uh, modern things, uh, let's uh, say, in those texts that will will make the people who will uh, stage that or shoot that uh, make a step forward to something that is step forward. Just let's say it's a, make a step forward. 
Okay, thank you. And uh, I have two, two more questions and we are uh, somehow starting to run out of the time. But uh, the, uh, the next question that, that I, I would like to, to ask and I would like to, to hear your thoughts is about this situation or this, uh, the, the difference between being a playwright and being a dramatist. And because uh, both of them, or in like not not, not always, but uh, but I would say like uh, it's it's much easier for a playwright to be a dramatist too, and to to be someone who who would be close to to the director and who would be the person in charge for 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 the play and for the, for for all of what, what a dramatist should, should do. And how, how do you see uh, your role there? Uh, do, do you find yourself like much more being uh, or having an opportunity to be a dramatist than a playwright or vice versa for all of you again? I don't think that it's a so tough question uh, and probably not 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 a stupid one. <laughs> well, in in my country, um, every major theater basically has a, a dramatist that is tied to, tied to the house, so they um, do most of the dramaturgy for the the plays chosen to be presented on. stage stage. Uh, I haven't personally heard about a case where the playwright of the text is uh, in the same time the dramatist while the, the play is being staged, but I'm doing that now and uh, I, I'm doing this play in National Theatre in, in Sombor, which I recommend dearly. <laughs> I mean the theatre, I recommend the theatre dearly for everyone. Uh, and it's a, it's a different kind of process because we, we write these texts trying to, to sort of pull something out from us, some sort of obsession or emotion or story or characters. And then we make this, uh, this uh, enclosed world on paper and then it has to become something completely else because uh, the text is as we all know, it's not the same thing as uh, an actual play on, on stage when it's not just words of one person, but work of, of 20 different people. So now I have to come out of my shoes as a writer and as this sort of mom to this text that is my baby and I need to mold it to, to become something completely else. I uh, did the dramaturgical work for uh, Miss Julie. Uh, we're working kind of on, on, on that right now. And uh, I mean, you have to, it's a, it's a tough job to stay uh, as respectful as you can to the text and yet make it uh, into something new with uh, a new approach. And I, I know many of my colleagues uh, had troubles doing this because you grow up reading these monumental writers and now all of a sudden you have to cut their lines. Uh, however, uh, yeah, so sorry to, to interrupt you, I, I've heard uh, once, uh, like, what's the difference between a playwright and the, and the dramatist? And like, the answer was, the, well, the playwright is the one who writes the lines, and the dramatist is the one who cuts off the lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not far from truth, but actually, uh, it, uh, it's sort of connected to this, this thing you were talking about, uh, with Sina and Nicola, uh, which are these uh, new ways to do uh, uh, an already famous established play, these new ways to direct it, to act it, uh, a new approach. And I think uh, dramaturgy and dramatists are crucial in this because I think they are the ones who first mold this, um, this new approach and this new angle 
uh, for seeing the text. I mean, so many plays that had put the, the emphasis on the main character, we now see stage, stagings of those famous plays putting the emphasis on the supporting characters. And uh, some of these plays have become classics, classics themselves. Uh, we see, um, I mean, Greek uh, tragedies that are no longer about kings, but about the, the soldiers or the wives or the victims. I like the, the opportunities that uh, dramaturgy offers. And I think there's a lot of creativity in that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, because sometimes that is easily overlooked. Uh, a director often chooses uh, by themselves uh, the, the exclusive approach and do the, the dramatist work on their own. But I would love uh, for dramatists as much as playwrights to, to be included in new stagings. Yeah. Uh, since this is, uh, as, as you mentioned that uh, in Serbia, uh, you said that uh, most of the uh, playwrights are uh, empl employed in theaters as dramatists, and, and that's the, almost the same situation here in, in Macedonia. Uh, there are, again, also the, uh, some young uh, playwrights are also uh, employed in, in few theaters, I think. I, I'm not sure if, any, if every theater has its own dramatist. As, I, as, I, as I'm aware, no, but uh, at least the, the biggest ones, uh, they have their own dramatists. And that's an opportunity for, for playwrights. But uh, again, since we are talking about the opportunities, uh, I would like to, to ask you, Nina, about your opp opportunity to, to, to collaborate with uh, Macedonian National Theater. And as you mentioned it, mentioned it in, in the beginning, how was this collaboration and, and what it was for you, what, what it meant for you to, to, to see a production of your play in a national theater? Uh, well, first, I, I just need to say that uh, when I say playwrights are um, employed in theaters, that's not most of them, that's about 10 of them. Uh, in a, in a sea of other playwrights and dramatists, there are probably thousands of us, but uh, unemployed hundreds and thousands, because I mean, how many major theaters can you have in a relatively small country? And uh, what, 10, 20, so these are 10, 20 at most people. Uh, most of uh, my colleagues are quite unemployed. Uh, so I, I would also very much like to see that major houses have um, several uh, chief dramatists. So not only so not only one person can work on every single play in that theater. Uh, I think it's better to have a team of five, ten people. I mean, it's it's quite established in Germany and, and in other European countries that put an emphasis on theater. Uh, and to answer the, the second question, uh, it was that little thing that's so crucial, unfortunately, in this line of work, which is luck. I, I uh, had my play produced in, in Skopje by great luck. I have met Maria Nechuk several years prior, I think in, in 2019 when I graduated, uh, because uh, of exactly the sort of thing I would like to see more in theater, both in Serbia and in Macedonia. And that is that I had a play and I showed that play uh, to an artistic director in one theater only to get feedback. And he actually read it and he actually liked it. And then he actually wanted to find a person perfect for the play uh, with no limitations. So he remembered um, Nechak's plays he saw abroad and thought, oh, never mind, he's abroad, never mind, it's a bit complicated. I can see them working together. I would have never met him if, uh, it, if it wasn't for, for the art director. And after I met him, we uh, liked working with each other very much. And he 
invited me to write this project that was um, staged in, in the, the National Theater of Skopje. So I, uh, I had help and mentorship and protection of a great artist that is not only my friend now, but also kind of a role model. And uh, I'm not being fake modest saying that I am not the only person who deserved that sort of chance. And I would like tens and hundreds of playwrights to get the same chance, not only because of us, of course, I, I'm very happy for myself, but I think it's it's better for everyone to establish these sort of teams that complement each other. Uh, directors and uh, stage and costume designers and dramatists and playwrights and actors that complement each other as a team. And uh, that's that's how you get great theater. That's how you get great art by, by complementing each other. And uh, I arrived in, in Macedonia in May uh, and I was quite sh shocked, honestly, by the level of respect that I got both as a playwright and as a person, because it's so easy to, to overlook uh, a young author. And I have encountered uh, that unpleasant experience many times. It's, uh, it's not a, a time <laughs> of risks. I mean, we can look around and see most of media are reboots, sequels and adaptations. Nobody likes taking risks anymore. And mostly uh, the majority of people blames those who do. So I come here and uh, my play is staged beautifully. And I, I love uh, the, the language of the theater chosen in it because it's not classical talk theater. It's uh, sort of immersive musical theater. It's more of an experience. I know that's not exactly new in this world. I mean, immersive experiences have been part of mainstream culture since the beginning of 20th century, but I don't think we have enough of them in the Balkans both in Macedonia and in Serbia and in, and in every other country of the Balkans. I think that experience and uh, the collaboration of the artists and the audience is what makes theater theater. And uh, that is sort of thing, this openness to immersiveness that I would like to see and uh, an openness to, to language that is not only verbal but is uh, visceral and, and physical. I think that's also a, a huge part of the experience. And it always was, as we mentioned, theater was a certain sort of thing for five uh, 5,000 years now. And uh, Greek tragedy emerged as this experience for the masses in the best possible sense of the way. Shakespearean theater as well in Elizabethan England. So, uh, I'd like to see more of that. Well, I hope that that we we will see more of that, especially because, as as you uh, mentioned, uh, there are persons who are willing to to play uh, a chain, a, a, a link between you and directors and the audience in general, and and that kind of person is Ivanka here, uh, a person who is who is linking uh, you with with the audience in in general. So, Ivanka, what what how, how do you see uh, your role and not your as per, in person, but but your role as as someone who is linking these these worlds, these persons, these professions. And uh, also, uh, can you tell us uh, like something more about the uh, publications and the ebooks and uh, where we can find them, how we can uh, get to them and uh, just to, to complete this kind of uh, link? Thank you. Uh, what I'm doing, I think it's something very normal. I don't want to sound pathetic, but I'm generation born in 1973. And during the 90s, I was the young one on the scene or outside the scene. And we had 
no chances at all. We don't have internet, you know? So I think today young people have a lot of opportunities. Not easy, but it's uncomparable, you know? But I don't want to sound pathetic. Uh, I think what I'm doing and people like me, what we are doing, it's very, something very normal and should be normal in every theater, in every independent scene, you know, everywhere. Because uh, you're, I don't, I don't know the other way, you know, for me it's normal. Uh, if I had as a representative of organization more money, I think I could do much more things, for example, you know. Uh, not only with young people, but with uh, uh, mixed generation. Uh, back to the electronic publishing, unfortunately, people who would like to have an example of uh, every electronic publication that we have uh, published right now has to contact me and uh, to ask for a gratis um, example or uh, for uh, to pay for um, book in PDA format. Uh, why we don't have um, how can I say um, electronic uh, e-shops dedicated for Macedonian publishing? You know, I think maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what is going in between. I have to check once again. Uh, but I cannot just like that. It's too expensive each time to make um, to put PDF on uh, CDs and to bring it to the various uh, Skopje, Bitola, Stips, etc. Uh, uh, bookshops because I know nobody will buy. Uh, each time when we publish a play, um, we, uh, make a we are making a pre-distribution to all directors and theaters in Macedonia. But I don't know what is going on afterwards. Who really reads or uh, are they are stepping in direct communication with playwrights? I don't have control on that, you know? But my principle and the principle of ITI Center is to make this uh, mathematical distribution, hoping on good feedback, hoping on staging. And it is this is very important, I like to say, we wrote each electronic book. The authorship belongs to the authors for stage. Uh, the authorship are 50-50% shared for eventual uh, sailing of ebooks, you know? But nobody is buying plays, unfortunately. That's why we are um, making additional electronic promotion by distributing the examples to the libraries. Because today every library has its own e-library section. And I think it's even better uh, promotion. Yeah? You cannot earn anything. The sales are very modest. But distribution uh, on the level of uh, promotion, uh, it is very successful, you know? So unfortunately, we have very specific media. They don't talk about our successes. But if you have some personal contact with the people from ITI Network or from Croatian ITI Center or German ITI Center or Anikpa or Lodepa Network, then you will find out how active we are and how much we nourish uh, uh, the, the products uh, made by our theatrical colleagues and who are, how can I say, uh, um, promoted via electronic book uh, as, uh, I don't know, visual ebook or play electronic play etc yeah, so for anyone who, who would like to to read this place they uh, they have to uh, to contact you directly or, or the iti center and we will send a, and, a and, here and how can they reach you uh facebook, facebook. i am i am me me myself, myself and uh, the center are most active and documented and archived on the Facebook uh, social uh, media. Mm -hmm. so, Facebook, not so much Twitter. YouTube, YouTube but YouTube, so you can see the videos, the video archives. But, but on Facebook, we have the time all the time direct uh, um, interaction, interaction via inbox or contact, or contact uh, uh, how can I say, a comment under the certain photo or status, whatever. The inbox, I recommend the inbox or email. If you go on the ITI network, and you search for North Macedonia uh, ITI Center, you will find our emails there. Macedonian Center of ET at gmail.com or Ivan Kapostolova at gmail.com. Igor Panev is our general secretary, but he is mostly active in the graphic design, not so much as a general secretary lately, uh, since we are working as an NGO, not anymore as an associative organization, being part of uh, Euro Balkan Institute. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that these uh, uh, emails and these contacts uh, will, will be shown 
on the descriptions below below this video. So everyone who anyone who, who would like to, to read the place or who would like to know something more about the place and, and hopefully anyone who would like to produce them, uh, they can uh, find them easily uh, by contacting by contacting yes. you. Uh, or eventual based on sorry for eventual staging, we can immediately uh, connect the directors with uh, uh, authors. Yeah. If, if, if they don't, if they, they, they don't manage to step in contact directly with them, you know. Yeah, yeah. There, there are both both ways. Okay then, and uh, since we are here at the at the end of this uh, conversation, uh, I would just uh, want to ask you once again if you have something uh, in mind, something that you would like to share with us, something that I I didn't mention or I forgot to say or or something, any topic that that we didn't cover, please feel free uh, to to say it now or or remain in silence <laughs> and. <laughs> And uh, uh, so we can we can uh, have some few minutes more. Just shortly to say, these people are very talented. They yeah. wrote brilliant uh, plays. That's what I want to say. Yeah, I, I've had the opportunity to to read all of them, and and I totally agree with uh, with Ivanka. So. Uh, since there are no other comments and no other things to to share, uh, I would like just to thank you all of you guys for, for sharing this platform and uh, having this great, uh, great talk here. And uh, I wish you all uh, having mm, or, or seeing your, your uh, place on, on different and worldly theaters everywhere, produced there by, by, by great directors and having a great success with, with your plays. And uh, for you, uh, audience that, that were with us, uh, I, I would just uh, want to recommend to stay uh, in touch with, uh, with this theater, European Alternatives, this online theater festival, and uh, follow this festival for the uh, rest of the program, and because there is much more uh, to, and there is, uh, there are some really great, great things to to see in this in this festival, and we hope that uh, as this is the first edition of the festival, on the next editions we will have much more uh, young playwrights and much more young uh, directors and theater duels in general to talk with them and to see their, their place and their deeds uh, with all of their, their success. So thank you all, uh, to all of you again and see you next time.